think big. That's definitely uh, that's definitely one of the things. The thing is, when you are in a startup mode, it's very hard to get. It's very easy to get bogged down into the details and um, and lose sight of the big picture. And um, I think that's where most uh, startups uh, really fail, um, or or actually make the mistake of um, of of. You know, just getting just getting wrapped up in the details. There are people who are in are good at the details, but as a startup entrepreneur, if you're actually the one building out your business, you must focus on the big picture. everyone, this is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Journey. I'm your host, Devin Miller, serial entrepreneur. He's grown several startups into seven and eight-figure businesses, as well as a founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where he helps startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. If you ever need help with yours, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat, and we're always here to help. Now, today we have another great guest on the podcast, Mariano Gomez, and uh, Mariano is a quick introduction. So I uh, did high school in Bogota, Colombia, did a tech, vo tech vo technical vocation uh, high school, specialized in working with metals and uh, focusing on STEM, um, got a systems engineering bachelor's degree, um, leans towards uh, computer science. And then once he graduated, uh, worked as a commissions analyst for AIG, um, went to work for another firm with ties to the US for ERP products, um, had an opportunity to travel to North Dakota, uh, met someone looking for a consultant for other businesses in Miami and helped to grow that business, uh, closed the Miami office, moved to Atlanta, uh, founded a consulting company on his own and grew that company. Um, and most of his clients were abroad, sold the business to a partner and uh, went uh, to work as a CFO or now went to the, or sold the business with the partner and uh, is also went to work for business or work as a CFO for other businesses. And with that much as introduction, work, welcome on the podcast, Mariano. Thank you. Thank you, uh, David. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I took a much longer journey and condensed it into the 30 second version of it, but let's unpack that a bit. So tell us a little bit about how your journey got started in Bogota. Yeah. So, you know, it was interesting because I was finishing college and, um, and uh, I actually had a colleague of mine uh, at the time, um, or a classmate, I should say. Um, he was work working for the AIG uh, called Meta Group, which is a large uh, pension fund um, management company there. And um, at the time, he was looking for an analyst. So now, before we jump into that, now we will in just a second, but even before that, so you went to high school in Bogota and you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, definitely, did. Oh, yeah, go definitely ahead. did. So I'm from a tiny island um, in Colombia by the name of San Andres Island. Grew up there. And uh, when I was uh, about 10, my parents moved us to Bogota. So I went to high school in Bogota for most of my time, uh, a vocational, technical vocational school. And uh, certainly um, there I, I uh, excelled in STEM and um, there was the vocational aspect of it, of it was the um, work with metals and, and basically electrical welding. Um, so I kind of came out of high school knowing a lot about electrical welding and, and certainly with very good math skills. Um, there I went to college. Uh, this was uh, actually studied systems engineering at the Universidad Antonio Nariño. So you can, you can under, underline that for your audience. And, um, you know, that was a five-year degree in Colombia. Most degrees are five years. And um, that's with a specialty in computer science. So, um, so at the end of that, as I was telling you, we, uh, I had this classmate of mine, we kind of hit it off from just about first semester all the way up to 10th semester. And um, he was looking for an analyst on my way out. So he basically said, why don't you come work for me? And uh, that's how I got actually, actually got my first uh, job out of college. Um, interestingly enough, part of that was um, designing a system that would uh, detect fraudulent commissions being paid out. And, um, you know, as a result of that, 
uh, first work after validating it with the upper management, 500 people got fired. So I actually had bodyguards for uh, the next three or four months <laughs> after that report. So that was interesting. So anyways, two years later, I decided to move on to, um, to something else. And in looking around, I run into this firm who was, um, they were trying to hire uh, somebody who would start up their ERP practice for Latin America. And um, uh, so I accepted the job. Uh, the only requirement really was to know some English and have uh, quite a bit of expertise in, um, in uh, ERP systems, which I didn't have at the time, but they decided to take a chance with me. So off I was to Fargo, North Dakota um, to work with the, at the, at the time, the Great Plains software team here in, uh, in Fargo. Uh, they got bought out by Microsoft later on. So that's kind of how my uh, my career started really in the ERP arena. And, uh, you know, I traveled Latin America extensively, just collecting requirements around taxation, around uh, the way sales uh, taxes are handled, a lot of the um, intricacies of uh, financial reporting, et cetera. And uh, that's kind of how we built a team of about um, five or six people with, you know, about 20 translators to basically pour through the code and, and um, all the text prompts on the software, make that very, um, very customized for the Latin American region. Um, in one of those trips back in 97, I met a gentleman um, who already passed away, uh, unfortunately. And um, he recruited me to come work for a firm in, in Miami, a consulting firm. They were actually starting up a practice. So back in 99, I moved to the US, um, accepting that job. And that-, um, now one, that landed... one question on that, because so yeah. you see, so met up with a, met up with someone else that was looking for a consultant now, you know, that was in the US, you were not located in the US. And was that a, Hey, this is a good offer. You know, what was the motivation for moving from? Yes. Uh, from Columbia thank you. Thank you for asking that because there are, there is some details there, and um, and obviously the first time I met him, I ran into him was in 1997, 98. Actually, that's the first time I ran into him, and at the time, I don't think the firm was was quite attractive to me, and in terms of size and um, and uh, certainly uh, expectations, but. The following year in 98, I met up with him again and he kind of uh, basically confirmed that the firm had grown a little bit more. There were already 25 individuals from the four and that sort of triggered the, um, my interest in really moving to the United States and, um, and joining this firm. Uh, the good thing is at the time, my boss was very understanding. Um, he understood the opportunity that I had, hadn't, had, had he, um, had he worked in um, at the Chase Manhattan Bank before, so he understood the opportunity for me. So uh, very supportive. Uh, you know, uh, we came to an agreement on finalizing my employment in Colombia, and uh, and then in '99, in January of '99, I was here in the United States. Uh, kind of to echo the uh, the song, I came here with twenty dollars in my pocket, as they said. Um, but built a career from there, really. Uh, it was a very exciting opportunity. Um, at the time was to help this company build their Microsoft Dynamics GP practice, um, which is a middle market ERP, uh, you know? So um, we worked on several projects at the time, building up the consulting methodologies and, and, and so on. So I worked my, my way from a consultant all the way up to a consulting manager position in um, in eight years, I think is what what I lasted there. At the end of eight and years, worked, so. and I and I think in I can't remember if it was they or during this time or after that eight years they closed that branch or that office and no 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 Miami, so Atlanta or was that a different thing? Yeah, that's a it's kind of along the lines, but they did not close down. Actually, nowadays they're still a very successful company and. Um, and, but I was uh, thinking it was a Miami branch, and, and yeah. Yeah. So my, my wife at the time, my wife did work for um, for a, for a uh, promotional products company that had a branch in uh, in Miami, 
and they were closing down and they were offering her the opportunity to move to Georgia. So at the time, you know, had I, when I finished my, my um, career with them, I decided, you know, it was a good change for the family and we moved to, to Georgia where we are right now and um, relocated to the Atlanta area. So that gave me the opportunity to start my, uh, my own consulting practice and uh, grew that with a, um, basically I started on my own first and then I met Let me gentleman. ask one question just on that, just before we get too far in. So you see you move, you know, wife, you know, had the opportunity to go to Atlanta saying, hey, this is a good opportunity. I support her. And, and you know, it just sounds like it'll be a good move for the family. Now, when you were doing that, was it, hey, I'm going to quit the job I'm at now and I'll figure out something when I get there? Or was it more of, I always wanted to do my own practice and start my own consultancy and this is the opportunity or you thought you'd work for the same company and didn't work out or kind of as you were moving or, or part of that equation, how did you kind of plan for yeah, that? That's a, that's, a good, um, that's a good question. So at the time I was, I was also doing consulting for the firm that my wife was uh, working for. And I had some deep ties with them as well. So given the fact that um, I was known to them, um, the decision wasn't hard at that point to move. Um, you know, nonetheless, I had already uh, resigned from my prior employer. So um, the, the real deal was to, you know, just organize myself as a, as a practice and, um, and offer myself as a, you know, as a firm with, a, with actually a, a, a company name behind me. So that wasn't hard at all. That was a, all part of the moving strategy, let's put it this way, to, to the Atlanta area. So I opened my LLC. Um, and uh, given the fact that I, I actually was fairly known in the industry as well, it wasn't hard to, um, to really develop relationships here in the metro area and start you know working with clients here in the in the space so i um i effectively um you know did all the the necessary steps to to come here and um after about a year i actually met a gentleman in in um in the same space working for a partner and we just decided to uh, to venture out, uh, grow the firm a little bit more. So that's when we became Intelligent Partnerships um, LLC, which uh, we then started to, uh, you know, to work more with international clients. And uh, that certainly opened a lot of opportunities. But there was an event that happened in 2008, which, uh, which we all know, the, um, the um, collapse of the uh, financials and, and certainly the economy. And believe me or not, that opportunity brought to light many, um, or that event brought to light many clients actually requesting services. And uh, we figured out that um, from there, we would grow into international markets a little bit more. We started working with clients as far out as uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, consulting for those clients. And... Um, we had a several opportunities in Europe and working through basically through the UK, uh, which led us to open an office there. So that was, that grew organically. And then um, back in 2015, uh, for fast forwarding another seven years, uh, we pretty much uh, were at a point where um, certain disobediences between us nonetheless, and, uh, and certainly the, at the size where we were, I thought it was a good chance to just um, uh, sell the company. And we actually sold, uh, at the time we had about 60, 70 clients. So it was very attractive for, um, for you know, the, the market that was interested in it. Um, so we ended up selling. Uh, we both departed uh, in good terms, of course. Hopefully that was, uh, that's, that's the same feeling. <clears throat> But moving on from there, I was actually on my way out from the channel. I was looking for, you know, kind of downtime and, uh, and, and what's not. But then I, I got uh, a friend of mine who also has a software company 
recruited me again and he said hey you cannot leave the channel there's no way you can, i'm gonna let you do that and um he hired me initially as a software engineer so i basically um reorganized all their um uh, you know software engineering practices and methodologies and you know kind of recruited some people to come work and um, nowadays i actually happen to be the cto of uh, mccormick chief technology officer so um, my life in tech has spanned over 25 30 years now doing um doing all sort of things like uh like i mentioned studying as an analyst going as into a consulting management role running my own business um and now here as a chief technology officer for um, for McCorma, which is a great company. We are a um, solutions provider for the Microsoft Dynamics GP space and uh, Business Central. Uh, we also have, um, you know, products in the AP automation uh, space. So that's kind of that's kind of our expertise, really. Um, now branching out into other things. Awesome. Well, sounds like a, a great journey and uh, definitely a, a lot of uh, fun things along the way. So well, now as we reach towards the end or the present day of your journey, one, you know, one question that comes up is saying now, you know, you kind of reached to where you're at today, but if you're to look out kind of in the next six to 12 months, kind of where are things headed or what's uh, next in store for you, kind of what do you see or where do you see things going for you? Yeah, thank you. Um, certainly, you know, being in the in a chief technology officer role, um, I've been able to run uh, our IT teams, our development teams, um, and uh, a great deal of what I'll be focusing on in the next six to twelve months is uh, developing our R and D practices. Um, I also helped of uh, with our professional services, building out our professional services team, since that was most of a, a good ch chunk of my time I spent in the consulting world. So that was natural to me. We built out our professional services team. Um, and now the next thing in my horizon is to, is to work and build out our R&D team and make sure that we solidify that internally in our organization. Um, so I'm looking forward to that really. Uh, farther out, I don't know, brother. I don't know what uh, life, uh, life uh, you know, puts forward, but um, you know, I, and I don't think I'm one to think about retirement, not not yet. That's not in my horizon. It's not something that I consider. I think I have plenty to contribute to um, to not only my organization but certainly um, to society in general. I don't know. In part of our conversations, uh, initially I told you I'm a Microsoft MVP and uh, certainly a Microsoft certified trainer. And in those capacities, I still continue to help. Uh, the technical communities around the world and is something that is a passion of mine. So I'll probably continue to do and develop that role. That's more. awesome. Sounds like some great uh, opportunities yet to come and some uh, a fun journey yet ahead of you. So with that, now as, uh, as we've kind of reached the, the current point of your journey and even looking a bit into the, the future of where you're headed, uh, it's a great time to, to transition to the two questions I always ask at the end of each uh, episode. Mm -hmm which is the first question I always ask you is along your journey, what was the worst business decision you ever made? What'd you learn from it? Yes, um, that's, uh, that's an interesting one. Uh, I think, um, you know, one of the things that I, I have to tell most entrepreneurs is that don't be afraid of failing. You know, failure is uh, certainly a part of the journey. It's one of those things that, um, that, um, define how you you know how you build up your expertise so don't be afraid of failing but the worst business decision is uh, perhaps um you know not having somebody in your in your bullpen that is as strong as you and um you don't want to you know you want every single person in your organization firing on all cylinders the way you would um, because that's how you are going to build up your your expertise overall you have to surround yourself with people who know more than you um, that's that's the that's the true secret i, I mean ultimately um, if i had to point my my finger at one business failure is 
surround my surrounding myself with people who um who are perhaps not on the same page with, that i am so yeah. hey well i think that's a a great a great thing to learn from the mistakes that are made and so it's a they're definitely yeah. insightful second question i always ask if you're talking to somebody that's just getting into a startup or a small business what would be the one piece of advice you'd give them oh wow um Think big. That's definitely uh, that's definitely one of the things. The thing is, when you are in a startup mode, it's very hard to get. It's very easy to get bogged down into the details and um, and lose sight of the big picture. And um, I think that's where most uh, startups uh, really fail, um, or or actually make the mistake of um, of of. You know, just getting just getting wrapped up in the details. There are people who are in are good at the details, but as a startup entrepreneur, if you're actually the one building out your business, you must focus on the big picture. Losing sight of that big picture is what what actually makes um, most startup businesses fail within the first two or three years. Uh, you know, you don't make it past the two year second year if you actually lose sight of the big picture. So that would be my advice. I think that's uh, definitely a great piece of advice and, and certainly something people can uh, uh, take and then be actionable on. So with that, as we uh, wrap up the uh, episode, if people want to reach out to you, they want to be a customer, they want to be a client, they want to be an employee, they want to be an investor, they want to be your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to reach out to you, contact you, or find out more? Yeah, certainly um, my email first and foremost, and I'm not afraid of putting it out there. That's uh, Mariano at mccorma.com and um you know we can put that in the link below um my you can always join me on twitter at, um, at dgp blogster um or join me on linkedin so just find mariano gomez bent um, that's my profile and I, or you can actually follow me on youtube and that would be youtube.com forward slash m gomez b1 that's my uh, user account. So uh, many ways to reach me. Overall, if you just Google me, Mariano Gomez Bent, you will probably find me in just about every corridor of the cyber uh, space. So, um, you know, uh, welcome to take any questions or, um, or certainly um, uh, just, you know, a piece of advice or, or friending somebody new. Well, I definitely encourage people to reach out, make connections, and uh, leverage some great uh, great knowledge and, and talent. So with that, thank you again for coming on the podcast. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure. Now, for all of you that are listeners, if you have your own journey to tell and you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, we'd love to have you. So let's go to inventiveguest.com, apply to be on the show. A couple more things as listeners. Make sure to click subscribe, share, leave us a review because we want to make sure that everyone finds out about all these awesome episodes. Last but not least, if you ever need help with your patents, your trademarks, or anything else with your startup, your small business, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat. We're always here to help. Thank you again, Mariano, for coming on the podcast and wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last. David, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.